is Wadona. Welcome to PassageForJesus.com. And with me today, I have uh, Dr. Walter D'Souza. I guess I would describe him as a theologian, uh, an evangelist, and perhaps a rock star. Maybe not a rock star, but <laughs> someone who likes to play the blues and the rock guitar. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You've got a band, haven't you? Well, I certainly do. Agape 3. Yeah. What does that mean, Agape? Well, there's three words in the Bible for love. There's, uh -huh. there's filio, which is brotherly love. There's eros, which is a love between a man and a woman, erotic love. Okay. And then there's agape, which is a, a transcending, uh, giving, a love that devours. Right. And the three of you, you put on these concerts, yes. okay, you play music, and you give pretty much everything you make, almost, yeah. to charity. Well, we have a small foundation, mm -hmm. and uh, we give between 50 and 100% wow. of all that we do for the poor, especially the children. Yeah. And our next gig is in uh, the Dominican Republic. And how did you guys come together, you and the other guys in the band? You know, it, it's such a neat story. When I was 16 years old, I was playing with these young men. Mm -hmm. And in fact, at one show, there was a, a, a producer there, a very well-known producer from Montreal, I won't mention his name, but... He brought in the Beatles, he brought in all these great bands, and one his, of, of his recruiters were there, and um, they wanted to have us come on board. They wanted oh, us wow. to do a pan-Canadian tour recording contract. Okay. But that very night, Verona, I went home, and I felt one of the mo most terrible existential emptinesses, if I could use that word, mm -hmm. in my life. I felt so empty. I thought to myself, you know, tonight I had a standing ovation, 400 kids. Maybe one night, another night will be 4,000 in the future, maybe 40,000 in the stadium, but I think I'll still have that emptiness. There's got to be more to life. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when I cried out to God. And um, to make a long story short, I had to leave the band. I broke their hearts. Because I said, you're crazy, now we're going to make it, you know, yeah. we've been playing for so a few years. so you really years. were almost a rock star, you were on your way Yeah, there. I guess so, maybe. <laughs> but, uh, but then 30 years later, we get back together, isn't that amazing? Yeah. I had a little project in Africa, we needed to, to raise funds, so I said, let's go back into the studio. We went back into the re recording studio, we sold uh, enough CDs to, to, uh, to pay for the project, mm -hmm. and then... Now we're, we're, we're playing together our, on a regular basis, so it's really wow. neat. Yeah. I just want to go back to what you were just talking about now, that, that, that moment when you were 16, 17 years old, you just come back you know, from this concert. I mean, what was going on in your life up until then? And, and if you could just explain to us, when you say an existential emptiness, uh, if you can describe that, if that's even possible. Like, well, the, the best way I could describe it, Ron, would be to say like a hole in your soul. Okay a void, that nothing seems to fill. You know, there was one uh, period of my life that every single day, as I was searching, every single day, mm -hmm. for one year, I was on some, some kind of drug, whether it be pot or hash or mescaline or LSD, mm -hmm. for a whole year, and that wasn't the answer. Mm -hmm. So um, then I would go have a girlfriend, I would be happy for two weeks, and then I wouldn't be happy anymore. So I'd get a new guitar, oh, this is great, and I'm happy. And I wouldn't be happy, like two hours later. So I said, what could, why am I like this? Mm -hmm. Am I the only one that's like this? Mm -hmm. And what can fill this void, this hole in my soul? Mm -hmm. And um, to make a long story short, um, you know, God uses, uh, strange things sometimes to speak to you. During that time, I went to a, um, a Black Sabbath con concert. Oh, okay, wow. Yeah. With Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I'm about 16, 17, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm tripping out on mescaline, and there's maybe 10, 12, 15,000 kids. And God has been speaking to me as I'm asking, is, is he there? He's knocking on my door, but all of a sudden, I kind of, we're strange as human beings. Mm -hmm. We want to feel this emptiness but our own way, you know? Yes. So God was beginning to deal with me. And Ozzy Osbourne, and I cannot explain why he did it, but this is the honest truth. During his concert, he stops. And he looks at the audience, and I'm there, and I'm, and I'm zapped on mescaline. <clears throat> and he says, all you kids 
don't want Jesus now, but you'll scream for it for him when you're dead. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I went. Ozzy Osbourne, I mean, we, we've seen Ozzy Osbourne. That, yeah, yeah. He, he was much younger. This right. is about <clears throat> 70, 71. Mm -hmm. But I had like, I got, whoa. And I cannot explain to you physiologically, but the effect of the drug just wore off. Whoa. And it's uh, as if I heard a voice saying, what he's saying is true. And Walter, you have a, a decision. You can open my life, open your life to me, or go your own way. I'm going to let you do what you want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you want to fill that emptiness, you have to let me in. Yeah. I, I ran out of that place. I didn't f finish the concert. Wow. And a few weeks later, I finally said, you know, Lord, I've tried everything else. I said, if you still love me, if you still have just a little bit of love for me le left, Lord, I... I open my life to you, come into my life, I just surrender, mm -hmm. and I accept you as, as Savior. And what would you say, I mean, that that's amazing, and, yeah. and, and obviously every person has their own moment, yeah. but some people you find uh, kids today, or even yesteryear, who grew up in the church and feel like they know who the Lord is, and yet still feel that sort of um, emptiness, you yeah. know? They feel they're religious, but yeah. they don't have, they, they still feel that emptiness. How do you, um, do you, do you think there's a difference between faith per se and, and religion? And, and, and how do you marry those two things? Or what do you feel you about that? You know what? There's an absolute difference between faith and religion. There are some pretty ugly things in religion. Mm -hmm. Religion is not the answer. I, I, was, I was being interviewed in Toronto for this other TV show, and they said, you know, Dr. D'Souza, you're religious. I said, mm -hmm. ooh, don't say that. <laughs> No. In the name of religion, people have killed. Mm -hmm. in, relame, in the name of religion, there have been a, oppression, there's been hatred, there's been sectarianism. Religion is not the answer. If it was, the world would have been healed millennia ago. Okay. Religion can also be very... There's, there's only one verse in the Bible that speaks about religion, and it says this. Pure and undefiled religion is this, taking care of the widow and the orphan. If you talk about that kind of religion, mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. for it. Okay. But the form, the ceremony, the emptiness of religion, I hate it. Okay. I don't want it. Faith, on the other hand, is not a religion. It's a relationship, a friendship. Mm. There's a, a moment of awareness. We theologians call it revelation, where something just, you know, I seem to lie. It's not <laughs> quite, <and the> not <laughs> In a sense, it's, it, you can't explain it. Right. It, there's an awareness that there is a creator, and this creator wants to be your friend, but there's a wall between you and him. Why that wall is there, he explains it to you. He mm -hmm. says, we all have a disease that's been transmitted from generation to generation to generation, and the Bible calls it sin. Now, it's not a very popular word, but it's sin. Mm -hmm. It's a... Um, a bent in our natures, you know, we have good and we have evil. Mm -hmm. But this sin is what separates us from a beautiful, pure, loving Father. So, that's why He allowed an unthinkable thing, His beloved Son, mm -hmm. to come to this world, to finally be executed on a Roman cross, and as He was saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All of my sins, all of your sins, all of the sins of, of people watching us was laid upon him and God judged him in our place so that there could be reconciliation and, and forgiveness. See, that's faith. Faith. All right. And you appropriate that by faith. And even it's a, a gift from God. Wow. So that's, so that's the difference. Religious, no. Do I love God? Do I want to be his friend? Yes. Yes. All right. Yeah. Well, Dr. Sousa, I think we're going to bring this uh, to an end right now. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us here. And just remind us again, where is Agape 3 playing next? Our next gig is in the Dominican Republic, Dominican Sosua. Republic. Okay. Yeah. And where do we get CDs? Like, if I want to pick up a, a CD, is that possible? Well, you somewhere? can go to uh, agape3band.com. All right. And, uh, and from there on, you can pretty fine find us somewhere yeah okay yeah. well thank you very much for joining us and talking to us about your life uh hopefully somebody out there uh can can find relationship in that
And, I hope um, so. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. It was a joy talking <laughs> with you. Thank you. You're welcome. My name is Waruna and this is PetsOfForJesus.com. I'm sighing. I'm sighing for you. You're pining your way, my sweet planet blue. Your forests are burning Your rivers are churning When will we learn what to do?